Here now, retired Las Vegas Police Lieutenant Randy Sutton. So it seems like MGM and the police have a different timeline. What do you make of that? Well, it's, I find it very disturbing. Uh, between this new information, which is the first time we've heard about this maintenance worker, in, in, and it's been a week now, over a week. Um, and then secondly, the information that uh, the uh, security officer, Campos, was shot before any of the shooting took place. And there is apparently a six-minute delay between getting that information and, and relaying it. Now, keep in mind, what's really important here is that there were two Metro officers in the security office at the time of the shooting. And they actually ran out of the building because the information that they got was that the shooter was at the, uh, at the event across the street. So that delay is, is, is really important here. If the, if the information had been communicated directly to those police officers, then they could have, they could have, uh, there may have been a different outcome to this. So well, this Lieutenant, is really you know, stuff. you know the Las Vegas Police Department very well, having worked there. I mean, what what do you suspect? I mean, it, it was is there an attempt to to maybe uh, excuse not acting as as quickly as they could have, or what? Well, I know the law enforcement acted very quickly for, from the information that they had. Um, I actually uh, had a communication with an officer who was on the ground there. And uh, they didn't get that message about the about the uh, the shooter until until the shots had already been fired across this you know from the from the 32nd floor down into the concert right. area. So the so problem the problem is really communication. The problem is communication with security to MGM and the police that needs to be handled better than it than it has been, or at least it was in this case. Let me just ask you quickly because we're running out of time about <clears> the motive of the shooter here. We're still not clear. Uh, what drove this this person to do the despicable act he did? There, there was an autopsy on the shooter. There was no brain abnormalities, as there have sometimes been with these shooters. Uh, he spent months at these hotels, so the guy had a a whole lot of money. Some would say much more than would be reflected by his real estate holdings. He and his girlfriend, by the way, stayed at these hotels together very often. They weren't drinkers. Uh, he had no social media profile. He didn't even have any fingerprints anywhere. He used to wear gloves even when he was driving in the desert. To me, it sounds like this guy had uh, some kind of ult ulterior career that he didn't want anybody to know about. You know, it's, re it's really interesting. This guy is an enigma. I mean, I refer to him as the boogeyman because he is our worst nightmare come true. Doesn't fit the profile of, of anything we've seen before. And that's what law enforcement looks at. Law enforcement looks at profiles, as do, do the casinos. Now, keep in mind that this guy was, as you said, very well known in the, in the Las Vegas casinos. Steve Wynn gave a, tra a, a very interesting interview the other yeah, day. He did. And, and also, Steve Wynn, I want to just refer to this. Steve Wynn referred to freight elevators during his, his um, interview several days ago. Now, today, uh, we find out that there's a possibility that Paddock used the freight elevator at, at Mandalay Bay. And, th and this is something that I find very interesting that ha Steve Wynn had this information before that we did. Yeah, yeah. The guy pretty much had to run to the whole place. Plus, he was comp for a couple of the days that he was staying there. We've got to leave it at that. There are a lot of questions yet to be answered. We hope you come back and help us yes. answer them. Lieutenant, thank you very much.